and welcome to this sort of stream, but I've had to upload it as a premiere because I can't stream because of copyright strikes. So anyway, um, this time I have a, a guest that I'm going to talk to. It's Mary Mayhem. Do you want to introduce yourself for everyone? Well, hi guys. I am Mary B. I am the mistress of mayhem. I am a disruptor of the narrative and I am an official women card holder. Um, you can find me over on my channel, Mary Mayhem, where I talk about newsy news stuff during the week and have some fun on the weekends, do geeky things like play Dungeons and Dragons and sing karaoke and shenanigans and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, when I've joined your stream zone, that they've always been good fun. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of fun <laughs> out there. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, and today I thought we would actually talk about an interesting different perspective of your journey through Star Wars, because I know that you're a fan of Menace and now you're just starting to get into the EU. So I thought it'd be really interesting to get a perspective from you on how the journey's been and your mindset going into it. Oh, um, well, where do you want me to start? Um, like At the beginning, so like, when did you first see Star Wars? What hooked you into it? I first saw Star Wars uh, before I have real memories um, of things like anything like I don't remember I don't remember when I first saw Star Wars because I was just so little um, but I remember seeing Star Wars over and over and over again as a child uh, mm -hmm. it was something my father was really in love with my father's just a huge Star Wars fan um, not expanded universe uh, he's just not that into reading uh, <coughs> nor me <laughs> <laughs> call him what you like he, it's his fault I'm here so yeah. um, but yeah, he he got me into Star Wars as as, as a little girl. Um, and he used to, I just sort of would sit on his lap, and uh, it was just sort of this uh, this you know, these moments. You know, you have those moments with your parents where they, like they sort of are ingrained into your memory, and you realize you realize this is something your parent loves, or this is something your mother or your father is passionate about, and you feel like, oh, okay, so I should I should pay attention, right? Because this is important, right? And so you could tell he was very, so I would sit on his lap and he would be like, hey, you know, that's Luke Skywalker, you know, that's space Jesus, essentially. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, you know, Some just, would argue that's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, <laughs> the, you know, the embodiment of hope and the willingness to, yeah. to redeem the irredeemable, if you will, right? Uh, to... Yeah. to not not turn away from someone who you thought was was beyond all hope. And uh, I remember, you know, just growing up essentially on it. And then as I got older and I began to kind of be able to grasp the actual the concepts that were buried or the the lessons that were buried within uh, the the actual story, the actual movies, like I, I'll, I'll never forget when it hit me what it meant when Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try, right? Mm -hmm. When that sort of hit me like a wave and I was like, huh, he's right though, right? Yeah, definitely. At the end of the day, it really winds up being only one of those two things. And you may have tried, but you if you didn't do it, then you didn't do it. And that sort of hit me really hard at the time. And it was a motivator in in very in, in a lot of in a lot of things in a lot of ways for my life, that I I wanted to be like Luke Skywalker, because he he didn't try he did, you know, um, even awesome. even when he was even when he lost his hand he still got back up and kept going, and so I wanted to be I wanted to be the one who did. And the one who who didn't just try, you know. So I remember feeling. I remember I had that conversation with a friend of mine. I used to be in fine arts. It was a thing when I was a, a young girl. When I was a, a teenager, uh, and I was a geek, and and it was not cool. It was not cool at all. It was <laughs> it's so cool hard. Cool. And there was this note that I was trying really hard to hit, and uh, or not me, uh, that my friend was trying really hard to hit, and she was she kept going for it, kept going for it, right? And she was she was really working on it. it was this thing we were doing for fine arts and she was really trying to progress and, and expand her range and so she'd been working on it uh and she was getting frustrated and she was like i just I, I i'm trying so hard and i just can't seem to do it and i looked at her and i said do or do not there is no try and she looked at me like i had three heads and i was, <laughs> I was like oh that's right um i'm weird okay you should <laughs> 
keep trying until you do it. And so, mm -hmm. and she did eventually. She did. She worked on it for months, and she did just finally. She was, you know, she was almost there. She just couldn't quite hit it right, and then she did eventually get to the point where she finally mastered it. And it was a big deal for her, and I was very excited for her, and she did very well. Uh, but I remember her feeling like a complete idiot for a minute, like. <laughs> That's oh, right. Loved, yeah. <laughs> I'm a dork. So just a lot of little little things like that peppered throughout my childhood because of Star Wars and me sort of realizing that I wasn't wasn't your typical girl, I guess. Um, yeah. because of it. <laughs> so I grew up on it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I've actually don't remember the first time I saw Star Wars yeah. either. But I have a fact file. There was a little thing I must have, I filled out as a kid and my handwriting's terrible because I was a kid. But there was, what was your favourite part of the movie? And it was Revenge of the Sith. And I said, when Anakin gets burnt into lava. Of course it was. Of course it was. Of course it was. The emotional thing. Yeah. Right? No, like, well, and it's, there's some, this sort of gratuitous, gory aspect to it as well. Yeah. So, boys are weird. <laughs> boys, but we boys. Boys are weird. Is that so? Is that your 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 <laughs> prequel fan then? Oh yeah, I grew up with the prequels. So I think my parents showed me the original trilogy before. Mm. But my parents are casual fans as well. Oh, normies. I'm working hard on not being that normie though anymore. I'm trying to get cool. trying to get there. Trying to get that status so I can make lethal That's proud. Cool. <laughs> lethal proud just get in with the Aussies <laughs> that's right you and your sexy accents oh my goodness you make a girl swoon <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah how's that calendar coming by the way oh the calendar will be coming when we get the $400 donation to Twin Sons Foundation so is it just one $400 donation or is it like can you explain that to me do I need to go get a credit card and make a four hundred dollar donation myself, or can I rally my friends together? And <laughs> uh, it's like the perk system. I think is layered so that it's when one person donates the certain amount, then you get the calendar okay. and the other perks. Because well, otherwise, uh, the way the perks work, everyone would be getting all the perks because you're raising however many. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Not just the billboard, although I am highly interested. Mostly just you in a, in a fireman outfit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole reason you're donating. Yeah, yeah like that, well, I do need to get on that. I do definitely need to get on that. But it seems like a worthy cause. I've got the trench coat to do that. Have I, have I made you feel <laughs> <laughs> like a serial flasher? You're just running around. <laughs> they said make a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. They're just calling the cops like, please come get this guy. I really don't know why he just exposed himself under a trench coat. <laughs> oh, that's great. Lord love a duck. I'm sorry. The goal for me tonight, I, like he asked me to come on and talk about like, you know, my journey through Star Wars and how I'm getting into the whole expanded universe. And I'm all just like, I have one goal tonight and that is to turn Callum into a tomato. That's my, that's the only reason I'm here. I don't like raw tomatoes. Raw tomatoes. Did yeah. Tomato. Tomato, yeah. That's how I pronounce it. That's how you pronounce tomato. You're <laughs> you're adorable. That's the Aussie way. Yeah. The Aussie way. Noted. So uh, yeah. Um also thinking about that story is the whole moment with Luke and Yoda with him going, I don't believe it, and Yoda saying that is why you fail. Mm. That's why so yeah, that's another awesome bit. There. Yeah. Well, they're sprinkled all throughout it, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the whole thing is just this sort of giant epic ordeal. And uh, it all comes together to create this one beautiful, cohesive story. But there's nuggets of wisdom all throughout it, right? Like, don't kiss your sister. That's um, probably not something you should do, right? Like, there are barriers. There are boundaries there. Um, just lots of, like, that was a yeah. joke. Um, comics back in the 70s and 80s, take note of that. <laughs> Don't do that. That's a bad idea. It's hilarious because as I'm reading through the older comics, before they revealed that they were siblings, I have them kissing a few more times in the comics. Oh, no. <laughs> no. And Why? it wasn't quite hard those times. It 
it's so cringe. Yeah. I, actually, I just got in the mail from one of my subscribers. I got a uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Oh, nice. Yeah? Is that a good one? Yeah. That's a really interesting one as well because you can see. Because that was going to be Empire Strikes Back if the original movie didn't do well. Mm -hmm. And that so you can read it and you can see some of the ideas that George Lucas actually reused in the future movies. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I really like it. doesn't have Han Solo in it because Harrison Ford wasn't signed on to contract for the next couple of movies. He only signed on for one. Really? Yeah. So there's no Han in that book? No. That's really interesting how they go about that. I'm kind of heartbroken. It's oh. an interesting perspective because they wrote it basically as like we could turn this into a movie with cheap scenes of film and everything. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. I, I had been told, I think it was um I think it was Ryan who told me that it was essentially like meant to be the sequel or whatever yeah. to uh to the original, you know, before it was episode four, just Star Wars. Um, and so it's, it's something to kind of like, a, you could look at it as like an alternate, un, like an alternate universe or something. Yeah. You, you have the perspective that there was only the one movie that came out then and only the novelization of the movie that came out. And so that's all they had to go off of as well. Okay. The real life reasons of they could turn it Harrison Ford, whatnot. So I'm cool. really looking forward to it. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be, well, I'll probably, so I think my goal right now is um, I'm going to finish, see, the next one I'm supposed to read, hold on, I have it written down here somewhere, Dark Force Rising is next on my list, because it's part of the Thrawn trilogy, right? Yeah, you just finished Air to the Empire, didn't you? Yes! <laughs> That's I awesome. I did. It was... Too much about the EU, I guess we should continue on with the story of what happened later on. So the change of you on Star Wars. Well, what the change? Well, so a I'm a little older than you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm I'm 35, and so I grew up on the original Star Wars trilogy, and then then the sequels came, or the prequels. I'm sorry, the prequels came out, right? So I was a young adult at the time, and well, was, I was a teenager, obviously, when Phantom Menace came out. But I went out and saw that, of course, with my father, and then uh, that was actually sort of my introduction into cosplay was oh. um yes i'm a cosplayer uh, and i yeah one of those girls um <laughs> yeah so um you know at the time i was you know i wasn't a I was, you know a teenager at the time when the phantom menace came out and i quite liked it um and then uh <laughs> attack of the clones came out and i was so excited I was so excited for that. My brother and I were just going to go. And oh God, we saw that. We saw Phantom Menace in the movie theaters probably like four times. And uh, so then, you know, Attack of the Clones is coming out. I'm so excited for this. So my brother's going to go as Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? So I'm making us these cloaks. And I'm so excited. I started, I learned how to sew. And so I made us these cloaks. We went and got those little lightsabers or whatever. I went out and got myself a, you know, because now I could be any Jedi in the world, right? There were a plethora. I could be any Jedi I wanted to be. So I decided I was going to be a hot Jedi. So Why wouldn't you be a hot Jedi? <laughs> that was immediately what I went for. So I go out and I get like this little white mini skirt and a white halter and then with my purple cloak and then I got a purple lightsaber, right? And so we're in line and we, we staked out the line because uh, this was a big deal, right? Like Star Wars is huge. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. So we stayed overnight at the movie theater. Like we got there at like midnight and waited overnight to go see the movie the next day. And uh, this was back in the day. They didn't do like the whole midnight premieres back then. Like they, at least not in our area. And uh, so we're there and we're all hanging out. The excitement is real. The hype is real. We get in there. And then I'm like, that was, that was different. Yeah. Attack of the Clones is very different. <laughs> <laughs> and Anakin was so whiny. And I was like, <laughs> well... I mean, at the time, I was pretty annoyed. I was pretty annoyed at the time. Like, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I, it was still Star Wars, right? Like, I, I loved Star Wars, but it was just like, man, Anakin is, doesn't really feel like Darth Vader, you know? I always called it the lovey dovey one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, was, and I was a little upset with Padme, who had been such a badass previously. And she had her moments in that as well, you know? She's like, I truly, deeply. 
after he just slaughtered <laughs> an entire group of people, the women and the children. And I'm just like, no, honey, no. <laughs> like, okay. he's not the one. She's, she's just like, yeah, that turns me on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's hotness incarnate, right? So I was a little turned off by Attack of the Clones, but it's still, you know, a lot of love for it, a lot of hype for it. And then, you know, Revenge of the Sith comes around and again on with the cloaks, right? My brother and I go and we go to see this movie. And again, we saw this in theater. I think, I think we saw, I think we saw Phantom Menace four times. I think we saw Attack of the Clones, I want to say two times. Um, and then we saw Revenge of the Sith, I think three times in theaters, three or four times. Um, nice. Revenge of the episode Sith. three, three times. Three or four times, I think. Yeah. Um, so I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it was still good. I really, I did at the time, I really enjoyed it. And I did believe the love story much more between Anakin and Leia. Um, but I recognized there were four. Anakin and Leia. Anakin and The whole family thing, guys. Bear with me. Um, <laughs> No, uh, between Anakin and Padme, I did believe it much more. You know, that was the one part where uh, they go in and, and she's like, she's like, I'm pregnant. And she's like, what are we going to do? And Anakin is is just like, this is a happy day. And uh, I believed that. I believed them in that moment together and that I their chemistry even worked on screen a bit. Right. Like there's sort of this panic, but that you could see that he loved her. And mm -hmm. um and so it did break my heart, you know, and he kills it when he kills Padme. And so I was far more on board with Revenge of the Sith than I had been with Attack of the Clones. And overall, I wound up being one of those people who recognized that the prequel had a whole lot of problems. The prequels had a whole lot of problems, right? Mm -hmm. Especially as I got older. But I also, uh, and I'm not, not a defender of the prequels, um, but I also recognized that they were a cohesive story and that they did yeah. a good job. Uh, conveying the atmosphere that they wanted us to convey. And even at the time when they came out, the CGI wasn't, like we look back on it now and we see this horrific CGI yeah. vomit fest that is the entirety of everything. <laughs> and you're just like, what am I even looking at? Now you see it that way. But at the time it was pretty marvelous. You know? Yeah, at the time they were advancing technology because it's because they did so much in the prequels that we have the technology we have today. Yeah. No, we're working out different ways to do things. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a prequel defender, but I, I recognize that they're decent stories. They do a yeah. good job telling the story. And of course, Palpatine is is fantastic. Like he's like the real the real person from those stories. You know, he's the one you you take a lot away from and he's the subtle manipulation. I really agree that Ian McDermott and Ewan McGregor are the best actors from the prequels. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that was when I fell in love with Ewan McGregor. Like, good lord, that guy's a stud muffin. So <laughs> well and you know me and every other Star Wars girl out there, right? So uh, in Ewan McGregor, any day of the week, man, and he was fantastic. He just, and he's, he's the reason that Obi-Wan Kenobi is in fact my favorite character from Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Love Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, and, and it wouldn't have been that way prior to the prequels. And it wasn't that way prior to the prequels. It was, it was Luke. Um, Luke was my favorite character. And so, but then the prequels came out and my character, my favorite character changed. And so now it's, Obi-Wan Kenobi because he's just this consistent character all the way across the entire tr the entire series, right? They did a great job of doing the casting as well for Oh yeah. Retroactive. It was best casting right. choice. Inspired casting choice. And then, you know, Ian McDermott's back and and wonderful casting choice because, you know, why would you change what ain't broke? Yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. And fantastic he worked out so fantastically so i did i did enjoy the prequels recognized they had flaws there were parts that i enjoyed more than others there were parts i cringed at there's still parts i cringe at but i do own those movies and i do still watch those movies um and and in fact did show show the movies to my own kids in chronological order um, because I don't see, I don't see there being anything wrong with them seeing it. It makes it easier for them as kids to understand, you know, the chronological order. So yeah, um, and I mean, you, people have different ideas about what's the best way to view it, but that's after we've already watched them, <laughs> right? As well, so. mm. some people. I like the idea of the machete order. The machete order. So um, I mean, they cut out episode one, but I put it back in. But you've put. A New Hope, and then Empire Strikes Back to keep the I'm Your Father reveal. And then you go back to the prequels and watch the prequels, and then you watch Return of the Jedi afterwards. 
Okay. I think, isn't that hard on a kid though? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could go release order chronological. I don't know. <laughs> The chronological is super easy. Like you just showed them, you know, everything or whatever. You just and don't have as big a reveal when Vader says, I'm your father and that sort of stuff. So. I guess, but if that's the only reason, if that's the only big thing that you're trying to show your kids about Star Wars, that indicates that there's, that indicates that maybe there's something more wrong with Star Wars than, and, and I don't oh, think yeah. that's true. There's just too many. Wonderful people with all these different ideas of what order you should watch. I mean, yeah, I, I have heard about it. I just didn't know exactly. Like, I, I have heard about there being some debate about what order to show them in. I didn't know that there were specific specific titles for specific orders. Yeah, that's a title for a specific one. And I actually left episode one out because some people don't care about the Phantom Menace. I'm like, no, don't skip it. Don't skip it. Uh, it's fine. I mean, look, yeah, you know, there's a lot of problems with it. Look, yeah. pop racing is awesome. Yeah, the pop racing. <laughs> the cinematography and the pop racing is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's worth it. And like seeing where Anakin comes from, it's hard to understand the weight of, you know, what he does in Attack of the Clones uh, without, you know, seeing the dynamic between him and his mother, you know? So I wouldn't cut that out. Um, it, it's hard to understand the beginnings or the roots of the relationship between Padme and Anakin without having that there, without having that sort of basis you know, knowing that he immediately from the get-go was taken by her, you know. And the blockade of the Trade Federation, uh, Naboo with the Trade Federation mm -hmm. and all that leads yeah. into a lot of the situation later on that sets up Palpatine taking over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Palpatine. I wouldn't say cut it. Not at all. I don't know why people would cut it. <laughs> anyway. It's not it's not like it's super hard to get through. It's just not like compared to other Star Wars films, it's not the best of the bunch, but it's still a Star Wars film and it's still totally worth watching, I think. So I, I guess I'm no personal defender. I, I'm not, I totally get the, the issues that people have with them. I have my own issues with them, but I don't think that they're they're not the they're not something you should cut out. They're not they're not like yeah, some horrendous it's still like, Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. It's still Star Wars. It's still totally worth seeing. And I would, you know, I wouldn't cut well the prequels in the original trilogy, I wouldn't cut any of that out. Yeah. Uh, not that and despite some like, problems with execution that they may have had, but I still have a great core story. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Enough to hype me up and keep me on the Star Wars train. It was really, you know, it, it it was the thing that kind of kept my love of Star Wars alive into my adulthood, you know, um, rekindled that passion for it. You know, um, I'm not sure if I would have ever played, you know, Knights of the Old Republic, if not for the the prequel trilogy, because um, it was just and that was one of my favorite experiences of Star Wars yeah, ever. An amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah, I, loved I loved that. I love that game so much. I love that game so much. That's amazing. <laughs> the first time you see that reveal, you know, oh man. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I caught the feels just there. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then you know, and then what was that? Four years ago now, the Force Awakens. Uh, came out. It is four years ago now. I hated that. Oh, almost four years, close enough. Four, yeah, roughly. Yeah, almost four years ago. And uh, I hate that movie. I hated that movie when it came out. <laughs> My <laughs> brother was so annoyed at me. Because <laughs> it was yeah. like, by that point, we built a tradition, right? Like, we'd gone, it's like every, every Star Wars movie that we'd been alive for the release of in theaters. Um, and and even we'd even gone to to you know screenings of the original trilogy in theaters together. We'd gone to see together. We'd always gone to see Star Wars movies together in theaters. So then the Force Awakens comes out, and I was living in New York at the time, and so he flew up to New York for Christmas and for the release of the movie. And so we're so we're so excited. We're so excited. Oh my God, we're getting new Star Wars. We're getting new Star Wars. The hype was real. <laughs> oh yeah was through the roof and you know the trailers looked amazing luke skywalker was going to be back and leia was going to be back and han was going to be back and it was you know chewy and we were so excited because that was everything that we wanted right like we wanted these original characters back and yeah. so because that was our childhood so for for a lot of people the prequels the prequels were their childhood but our childhood was 
the original trilogy. That's what we were raised on. And we didn't get the uh, the prequel or the, yeah, the original trilogy was our childhood. We didn't get the prequels until we were adults, essentially. Um, and so this is our childhood coming to the screen again. And we're ecstatic about it. And we get into the theater, right? We're in there and I've got my popcorn and it's great. And we're doing our thing. And, and, yeah. uh, and and we're all watching the movie and I and I I liked Ray I liked her introduction. Her introduction was fine. It's because it wasn't that a opening scene is actually pretty cool with the yeah. Scavenging. You learned a lot about her in that opening scene, uh, without a word spoken really. But then immediately when that was over, like you get her interacting with Finn and BB-8, and she's got this sort of cold exterior, and I was like, I don't really like her. And then she goes on and she, and it gets more, and I, I like her less and less, like, like essentially from the, from the minute she started interacting with Finn about stop taking my hand. I was just like, I don't like you. Yeah, that was weird. I, I didn't like, well, cause immediately she started acting like one of those kinds of women that you, you have a hard time dealing with being around, right? Like one of those sort of uh, uppity chicks who gets upset over nothing and gets upset over silly things. And so you're just like, can you please calm down, calm down. It's just your hand. Right. Like it's not it's like he's thinking he wants to help look after you. <laughs> yeah. Well, God forbid from someone be aware that you're in danger and try to help you. Right. Mm. So, and so immediately from her interaction with Finn, I was like, so from pretty much from the get go with her, with the exception of the opening scene, I didn't like her. I did like Finn. I liked Finn a lot. Um, but he was really the only one that I kind of really liked. <laughs> the rest of it was, I knew immediately, it was all a, a rehash of A New Hope, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't like it. And They've sprinkled in a couple of other bits and pieces, but they just yeah. mixed it in from what came before as well. I didn't want another Death Star. I didn't, I didn't, mm. and I did not like that, that Han and Leia were so, that they weren't together still. That broke my heart. Yeah. It's really not the timeline I prefer, obviously. <laughs> well, I have to get into all of the EU books, but as I understand it, they're, you know, they stay together and. Yeah, and they're together. And, for the whole time. Yeah. Not without the issues, but of course they resolve them and everything as well. Well, but isn't that how real life really? works, you know, and how That's mature how adults work, you know, and I find it hard to believe that you could present a problem before Leia that she wouldn't handle. Um, you know, she's, she's just not the kind to back down or to, to allow things to fall apart. So, yeah. um, and I still, and then I never understood why, why did it fall apart? You didn't tell me why you never, you never told me why these yeah. characters I love. The, the issue with it is they said it 30 years afterwards. And didn't explain things properly. Like, even in the... All right, so when I was... Before the movie came out, I was like, okay, they had this must-read book before The Force Awakens called Aftermath, which is written by Chuck Wendick, which I'm sure you've heard of. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> and it explained nothing about what really happens in between, which was... Then going into that, it's like, wait, why are these characters ended up like this? And they still haven't explained it in any of the extra material. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know why they fell apart. All I know is that you ripped them apart and you never even told me why. Why would you do that? Like, yeah, I loved them. Naturally, even though it's 30 years, you want to see that they're actually successful. Well, of course I wanted to see them successful, but if they're not going to be successful, the least you could do is have the decency to explain to me why. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, why is it that these characters who I watched fall in love, reluctantly, I might add, um, at least on Leia's part, um, who 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 saved the galaxy together and and then proceeded to bear children and have a family, what ripped them apart? Why? Yeah. Why did you take that from them? Why did you take that from me? I was invested yeah. in this relationship. It's like it's like having two best friends that get married and you're excited because yes, we're all gonna be together forever. You know, <laughs> we're gonna go play pool on Fridays. It's gonna be great. Gonna we're gonna be grow lit. together. <laughs> you're gonna be on their front porch swinging with them. You know, when they're sixty. You know, we're all gonna retire together. You're just so happy they're together. And then one day, one of the friends comes to you and says, "We broke up," but they can't tell you why. And all you know is you had plans on Friday to go play pool with the two of them. And now you're not doing that. <laughs> this is bullshit. 
sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, yeah. That's a, <laughs> like, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> not. They they really to show that progression, they really needed to take us along the journey towards it. Yeah, you can't just like pull them apart and then and then the gig, the big kicker, the, the the thing that made me decide I hated the Force Awakens was while I was sitting there in the theater and I realized Han was about to die. Spoiler alert! And mm. you I don't sitting, know if I'm out here. I was sitting next to my brother and my my then husband, and I was getting more and more mad. And I went, "No, no," because I didn't know this Kylo Ren from Adam. Ha <laughs> ha! Pun intended. I didn't know. The, I didn't know him, and I didn't know why he had the right to kill my Han, or why they had to do it so blatantly. Why I had to sit here and know it was coming for so long. I telegraphed it way too much. It was so drawn out, and I was sitting there smacking my brother, going, "No, no, no, no!" And he was like, "Stop it! Stop it!" Watching the movie, I was like, "No!" I was mad, and then mm. he died. And I was even more mad because who the fuck is this guy just killing Han Solo? He's mm -hmm. and, and I get the parallels they were trying to draw, but I had not enjoyed the movie up to this point. Um, it was flashy and pretty, but I didn't know who the heck Ray was or why the heck, why the heck Chewie was not getting a hug from Leia or or where the heck the dynamics of these relationships. Or why they didn't even have the big three meeting up before. <laughs> exactly. Where was Luke? There was no Luke. There was yeah. there was none of what I'd been promised. I'd been promised my characters back, Dag Nabbit. And instead, yeah. I was given these this chick who could do literally everything. Oh, Compressor. Yeah, congratulations. You know the Falcon better than Han Solo? Who the heck are you? You're some <laughs> nobody from Jakku. And you're running the Falcon. You've never left before. I've never flown in space before. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like. And he takes out the TIE Fighters. Right. Yeah. Who are you? And But you've never done these things, but you can do all these things. And I. Okay. Well, you can't just point at the Force because that's not how the Force works. And so. Yeah. I love how they contradict themselves with how Han says the Force. That's not how the Force works. And then Ray immediately does it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And I hated it. And then we walked out of the theater. My brother loved it. My my then husband loved it. And mm. and I was seething. I was angry. I didn't mm. like it at all. <laughs> but I love Star Wars. So I was happy to take yeah, take a can, chill pill, I guess. You can say, hey, they might have one bad movie and then the next one would be all right. Right. I assumed, well, I, I recognized, so within days I was already theorizing, I'll bet you she's Obi-Wan's granddaughter, right? Like within yeah. days I was willing to get back on, on the, okay, but there are things we can do with this, right? Like yeah. There's we can still go, potential for the story. Right. There was plenty of potential to move forward. And I had even talked to myself into thinking, okay, maybe there's like a force link, like between Bastila and Revan, right? Like, like maybe they've got this force connection. And, and, and so she can sort of, um, sort of draw off of him to some extent, right? Like there were lots of things I was telling myself in order to try to make this better. Right. Yeah. So I was, Willing to start drawing little like lines with the yarn on the on the big board with the pins in them, right? Like, okay, so this my conspiracy theory brain was was happy to allow myself to get over the anger that I had initially felt at the Force Awakens and try to move forward. And then the first the first uh, trailers start coming out for the return or for the the Last Jedi, and and I had liked Rogue One. So I was like, okay, so this is going to be good. And then, you know, it's time for the Jedi to die. I was like, oh, I got the Ashla and the Bogan. Oh, my gosh, guys, we're going to we're gonna get the great Jedi, right? That's what I was thinking, right? We're going we're gonna to get some, some cool stuff. Get some theorizing out there. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did what we always did, my brother and I. I flew home. So I had a choice that year for Christmas. Uh, my, my husband was uh, deployed. And I was like, okay. I'm going to go see his family because, you know, sort of the surrogate for them at the time. So I'm going to make sure I spend time with every everybody on all the sides for Christmas. And so I flew home to my side of the family for Star Wars. And I went home to his side of the family for Christmas. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Seemed like a decent compromise. So yeah. I went home for Star Wars. 
And what other reason do you need? Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was tradition, right? Like go home and go, go see Star Wars with my brother. You know, yeah, busted definitely. out the lightsabers. Get to the movie theater. Get the stormtrooper popcorn thing with the, the popcorn. A. You know, I got a little mm -hmm. evil BB-8 stuffed ball. I was like, let's do this thing, right? Like, we're going to do it. It's going to be great. Right? Yeah. Get in here. <laughs> Caught a 3D one. I had my glasses on. I was like, give me the headache. Let's bring on the headache, yeah. right? Sitting there, and then we start. Yeah. We're going. And then Luke chucks the lightsaber. I was even cool with the the your mama joke, right? Like, it was because I was all on board because it was stuck. yeah, it was cringe, and then you're like, okay, whatever, next part. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. I want to be happy, right? Mm. So I'm happy to choose to be happy because I'm willing to set the Force Awakens aside, right? We're moving forward. Yeah. Let's go forward. So we get there, and then. Luke throws the lightsaber, and I was immediately mad. The minute he threw the lightsaber, I was like, what? He wouldn't do that. Luke wouldn't do that. Luke would not throw his father's lightsaber, the man he was willing to risk his own life to save, off a cliff. He wouldn't do that. He might and just clip it on his belt or something, or... Something I mean, even different, if, but he wouldn't just chuck it. <laughs> even if he were willing to abandon the Jedi, this was more than just a representation of the Jedi to Luke. Mm. This was his father's lightsaber. This was the thing that started him on his own journey towards being a Jedi himself. This was this was a moment, this was the very catalyst for his entire life. Mm. And you're telling me he's gonna throw that off a cliff? No. Yeah, they presented this completely different person. I mean, he put his he even folded his own Jedi robes back up and put them in a chest, but he threw the lightsaber off a cliff. <laughs> what sense does that make? And then she's got him following <laughs> around the island, and he's drinking boob milk out of a sweaty space cow. I don't even know why they put that scene in. Oh, flashbacks. I mean, <laughs> To make us uncomfortable, I guess. To hammer home the point that the Luke I love is clearly not here. That this is not mm -hmm. Luke. This is not Luke. And that made me mad. And so that sort of stuck with me throughout the rest of the movie. This treatment of Luke. I was mad. I was so mad. Mm -hmm. And 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 then I was like, okay, I can't. I was never at that. after the Luke stuff. I was just sort of out of it, right? Like I was just sort of dazed. Yeah. I was sort of like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And mm. the movie goes on, and I sort of phase out. It's the only Star Wars movie, and this includes Force Awakens. Like even though I didn't like the uh, the Force Awakens, I still saw it in theater a few times. Mm. Uh, because it's Star Wars. Yeah, it's the only Star Wars movie that I've ever seen. In the theater one time. Mm -hmm. And when it was over, my brother and I got into the car. And normally, when my brother and I get done watching Star Wars, the first thing we do is we chitter chatter, we start talking about stuff. Talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to banter back and forth with one another. You talk about it, you you discuss these things. And that didn't happen. For the first mm -hmm. time in my entire life. I had watched a Star Wars movie with my brother and we had nothing to say to each other. We had a 45 minute drive home and we sat there in silence, just completely dazed by what had just happened. There was nothing to talk about. There was, everything was dead. Every theory, everything we could have possibly have, all of our little yarns, everything that had given us any measure of excitement moving forward was dead and buried. And so was Luke. Yeah. And I felt dead inside. I just felt hollow. I still get upset sometimes thinking about it. And you, you know what? Call me a man, baby, guys. <laughs> Call me a man, baby, if you like. I don't know that I have the anatomy 
to support that particular <laughs> that particular claim, but it it gutted me. It gutted me from the inside yeah. out. This thing, this this thing that had helped build me, this thing that had helped shape the very human being that I am today, had gutted me. And Luke was yeah. gone, and Leo. Carrie's gone and Han's gone and I will never see them together again and you turned him into a disgusting cow suckling pig before you murdered him yeah, and I was so angry not nice. yeah. and you want me to care about this chick who's running around after some abu mentally abusive guy what cause he has abs congratulations Six months in the gym will do that for any guy you meet. Mm. Why do I care? The only the only one of the new characters that I'd really given a damn about, Finn, turned out to be nothing. He He's had just, some character development in The Force Awakens, and then this just went, yeah, that character development was gone. Well, the one moment I thought they were going to develop his character, they stole from him. His moment of shining glory, where he could go out saving the Resistance they took from him because of a middle school kiss yeah <laughs> i didn't like the, the story choices just don't make sense so yeah i was angry i'm still angry yeah and a bit of my side of that with that is i'd actually a lot i hadn't read as much of the eu yet before the time but I read a lot on Wikipedia and I'd read a bit of a like Jedi Academy trilogy and I'd played a bunch of the games and stuff. And I was, when I bought into the hype of The Force Awakens, I really thought, oh, this has huge potential because they're starting a new timeline. And you go, okay, I'm open to them doing some really good stuff with it. This has huge potential to progress the universe in a completely different way that's still really good. And then they come along with the movie with The Force Awakens to start with and it just completely shattered me in the end after seeing it because they reset the universe, Empire versus Rebellion, and they'd lost, already capped a lot of potential that they had for it. But I th after that, yeah. That's a great way of putting it. They completely capped their potential with where it was that they could move forward with this. Because it was, what was the point? What was the point yeah. of everything? What had Luke even accomplished if this was where we were going to wind up? Yeah. And then we have uh, me afterwards. I went through my phase of hating on it and whatever. And that was before I was on YouTube or anything. Facebook posts going detailed. Like I broke it down and it said everything I didn't like about it and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> Um, all the things. Let's go through them, shall we? we it, it's like watching Mauler's video. Yeah. I was going, yes, a lot of this I thought of. Mm -hmm. And you can go look at my book reviews and that my EU reviews and go I'll break it down like that. And I did the same sort of thing with that. There's yeah, some good moments. But then, anyway, back onto the main story. <laughs> but um, after that, I was like, Okay, they really kept the potential. I'm not that interested in this new timeline. So I read the novelization of The Force Awakens to see if it improved on it a bit. And, I mean, the story doesn't change. And they sort of just fill in a couple of gaps. But something that really ticked me off was that they had a deleted scene with Chewie pulling a guy's arm off. Really? Yeah. And one of the things that was missing was dismemberment. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and I was like, why did they just not put that in as a fan service thing? Just to... That would have been awesome. <laughs> oh, because it's Disney. Because Disney is far more worried about Disney than they are Star Wars. Mm. Anyway. Questioning that sort of stuff. And that goes through and goes, okay, I made my peace with it after a certain time. Rogue One I did enjoy. Even though people say it lines up perfectly with the movies, I'm like, well, yeah, sort of the ending doesn't line up with New Hope because why would they have the ambassador charade if they just saw the ship fly away? Anyway, <laughs> enjoyed Rogue One. <laughs> Rogue One. And then, yeah, it was good. Darth Vader scene just made Yes. It. <laughs> 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 
That was awesome. Uh, then you have The Last Jedi, which, to be honest, because I was quite let down by The Force Awakens, I went in expecting that sort of level, and thankfully I wasn't super disappointed by it, but I just saw it just getting worse. And in retrospect, I can see the how he picked up from the threads in The Force Awakens and what they did with capping the potential and everything, and continued on with it, but they just made silly story choices, stupid story choices with it. So many. So many. And I'm just like, I tell you, after the novelization, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to stop reading the books and let the visual media impress me. Sorry, I forgot to say that bit. I've watched Rebels. I've watched The Last Jedi. I've watched, even watched season one of Resistance, like many, many people haven't. And the, the more the, I watch, I mean, I'm not going to bother anymore. I might see the first two episodes or something of The Mandalorian to see if it actually has a good inciting incident for the mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. Rather than that, the more that I hear about the new canon, the less I'm interested in it in the end. Because I realised that after I went through the hate phase, I did the same thing with the last year. I pick it apart and whatnot. But mm-hmm. After I went through that phase, I just realised that it's not worth all the energy hating on it. Yeah. Because it's just something I'm not interested in anymore. And so I've come to the point now where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to enjoying the EU. I started reading the EU chronologically in about 2016, I think it was. Really? Yeah. So you've been at this for a pretty, you haven't been at it for that long then. Yeah. I only started doing YouTube videos in October because wow. I realized I was starting writing reviews and whatever my thoughts on it. And then I'm like, why don't I do this as a video? And so I started with that and it goes on from there. So how far have you made it in such a short time? So end? I'm about two thirds of the way through. Wow. <laughs> You must be like plowing through this stuff. I'm getting there slowly. I feel like I've slowed down now compared to what I used to because I've got college in that. But yeah, I'm still going through. It's amazing how much life can sort of drag you away from the things you enjoy doing. Yeah, and so you find yourself just not able to get to the stuff that you would really like to get to. Yeah, definitely. It took me. It took me like I don't know, like two or three weeks to actually get through um, the Heir to the Empire, which is pathetic. Mm. It's an audiobook that I've been listening to. <laughs> but, like, you you have to go back and listen to it again because, you know, like, I, I missed that last chapter because I've got kids hollering or I'm in a loud car or you, you, right. you miss things. And so you have to sort of back up and backtrack over things. And even now, I kind of just want to go ahead and listen to it again because I feel like there's so much I didn't pick up. But... Yeah. It's it's still it's worthwhile though when it like when you actually get to sit down and get into it, it's it sucks you right the heck in. Yeah, definitely. But you'll do that, and um, I should say I started the novels chronologically because I didn't have all the comics, and so the comics I've started with the Marvel run recently, leading up to issue one hundred and eight that came out, which is awesome. See, that's so cool. I've, I've only read a few comics. It was I was much younger when I was reading comics and, and I didn't read a massive amount. I just what my friend yeah. to give me and to go through. Um, so, and I've, I've not read much. Like I have, well, I do have one. Star Wars comic. Yeah. I should say though, I read what sales comics I found on the shops or whatever. One time my parents found a huge stack of sales comics for 50 bucks. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've got a mixed mash of, Single issues, so some of them aren't complete, but they're still really fun. I've read them all. It's awesome. I have, um, I had something sent to me. Okay, I'll just show you this real quick. So I had this sent to me a, about a month and a half ago. <laughs> oh, yes. Dave um, is the Zeltron. Yes, I actually know what a Zeltron is. So I play a, a Star Wars RPG um, with my friend Stieg. Uh, he's the game master, and I'm a Zeltron. So oh, yes, that'd be fun. Yes, I'm having. No, I, especially since uh, issue seventy-seven of the original Marvel run is hilarious because you have like 
three Zeltrons chasing after Luke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm going to get to more review of that as well soonish. I'm going to have to get it. I can't actually read this because it's in Norwegian. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't actually read this comic, but I love it. I love the cover and I, I love that it's, it feels so nice and fresh in my hand. It makes me want to go get a comic yeah. book. So. And the comic books have been super expensive, so I haven't focused on getting all of them yet. I've focused on my novels, of course. But yeah. yeah. Why would you I audio? To, I tend not to re listen to audio books as much, but I'm trying it for the book club coming up, which is going to be cool. Um, for that, yeah. Yeah, usually I like sitting down with the book and reading it because I just escape into it. That's always been me since I was younger. My parents would be like, hey, can you just stop reading and do this? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great problem to have with a kid, though. Can you yeah. just not read for a little while? <laughs> yeah. We need you to do something. Stop reading. So at school, when you get detention or whatever, they put you on the log and make you read. And I didn't see that as punishment. So, like, no reason to straighten up and fly right when all yeah. you do is just go read. I'll just sit on the log and read anyway. <laughs> <laughs> read my Star Wars book at the time or whatever I was reading. <laughs> this is not a punishment. You guys are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then they realized that it wasn't a punishment and then said, you have to sit on the log and not read. <laughs> well, that was punishment. Yeah. Surely. Must have been driving you crazy. <laughs> uh, vague memories of just being bored. <laughs> so, so Callum, how old are you? 20? I'm oh, 22 now. You're 22. Did you just have a hard time remembering how old you are? My yeah, I had a brain thing. Had a brain Because I'm thinking about Star Wars and back further. I'm just like, yeah. 1996, anyway. I'm born Nothing. in December. Nothing exists before Star Wars. Very nice. Star Wars is everything. <laughs> well, it, it it wasn't for a while. It was not. It was the thing that drove me absolutely insane. Oh um, yeah, it's for a while. Really, better. really the I chose to decanonize the EU. I, I had a maid in high school that if we were both a bit skeptical on how they go forwards, but then we ended up going okay. It could be good. You never know. Yeah, and then it ended up like it did. Anyway, that's sort of my journey. I saw Solo as well. You saw what? I saw the movie Solo as well. Solo. Oh, yeah, I saw it on Netflix mm. afterwards. It was fine. It was fine, but it's like you're still making stupid story decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I get what they were going for. It wasn't the worst thing ever. It just it, it didn't feel like Han. Yeah. So it, the, the choice to have, make a solo movie when they didn't have Harrison Ford in it was odd. Yeah. They should have just made something different. It just felt like a further replacement of these characters that we love yeah. um, that are already est firmly established. And I'm not really sure. I didn't need you to tell me that the reason Han's last name was because an Imperial guy was stumped. Yeah. And it gets <laughs> everything handed to him. Like, yeah. And you could, for a good story for Han. You can read the Han Solo trilogy by AC Crispin and there's also the Han Solo Adventures by Brian Daly. They're really good. Nice. See my list of books to read just keeps getting longer and longer. And yeah longer. I'll send you something afterwards. Oh yeah I, I, and you can look at my expanded universe timeline which can be overwhelming probably. <laughs> Imagine so. <laughs> so, but I've had such a good time with Heir to the Empire, and I've finally gotten yeah. to know Mara a bit. This character that yeah. everyone talks. So, about. what actually got you into wanting to read the you? So, it's always sort of been one of those things that was on my bucket list. You know, like right. one of these days, I will really get into the EU. Right, like, like I had loved playing Knights of the Old Republic, and and loved getting like sort of the, a bit of knowledge. <laughs> I loved that. Um, but I, I knew that there was a lot more out there that I was missing out on. But I'm sort of, I'm one of those geeks who 
has like this massive array of geekdom that I get into. Like I was a uh, world yeah. yeah. I but, can easily do that as well. <laughs> yeah. I love the vast array of, of stuff you can do in geek culture, right? Like I love mm. cosplaying. I love video games. I loved, I, I was huge, huge into world of Warcraft for about five years. Oh, I was nice. the third best geared tank on my server. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> My my was a paladin main spec tank off spec heals. I was really I was really into World of Warcraft for a while. Loved cosplay, um, loved loved uh, Batman specifically growing up. I loved the Batman and Spider Man cartoons. I loved Harley Quinn. I loved loved X Men. Um, so there's just this huge array of stuff. I loved uh, play D and D, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, D and D is actually something that I've always wanted to try, but never ended up being able to do. Well, you guys have drugged me into the EU. Maybe I can help you with that department. Oh, that'd uh, be cool. Even if just entering on six game whenever the time zones line up. Yeah. Yeah, dude, we have a blast with the whole D and D thing. But the EU was something I'd always wanted. I'd always sort of wanted to to get into it. But it had just sort of fallen further down the list behind a bunch of other things that I loved okay. doing. And when you're, you know, you've got your set of priorities, you know, you've got your daily yeah. life, you know, especially if you're married and you've got kids and you've got these things that you have to take care of. And then you make time for the cosplay and you make time for D&D. &D. EU was something that just wasn't the priority. Yeah. And then I got into YouTubing and uh, I met Lethal, uh, who pastored me about it for a while. He you know, lovingly, I assume, referred to me as a new <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm like, okay, I guess I'm, I, but I'm not really a normie. I'm, I am a geek, right? Like I just, you know, my, my mm. beasts are all over the board. Yeah, you just and end up in a lot of fandoms because you're like, you can easily go, hey, I like this and I like this and I like this. I like exactly. <laughs> and as D and D would refer to me, I'm a jack of all trades, right? So, mm -hmm. I I like to to kind of stick my fingers in a bunch of pies, and I enjoy a lot of different things. But the EU sort of it's like come to the dark side, right? Like come to the EU. And so I didn't understand a lot of what he was talking about when he would get into like these in depth discussions, and I would just be like, you know, okay. Maybe I am a normie. Um, maybe <laughs> I don't. I don't like referring to myself that way because I. You do not get geekier than I am. Um, but perhaps, perhaps there is a lot here that I'm missing. And then Ryan Kinnell came along, RK Outpost, and he sort of <clears throat> pulled up this EU banner, right? And so now it was no longer just lethal, sort of uh, trying to to champion the eu now it was now it was these two guys who i respect and i value and and i'm seeing this sort of movement and i'm being introduced to this eu movement because of these two mm -hmm. and Absolutely. i realize hey um maybe this is something that i should move up on my list of things that i'm paying attention to i definitely so, approve of that <laughs> and, and that was the best part is there's no agenda behind them right it's just it's yeah. just you can see the love and the passion and the zeal that they have for it yeah there's something there for them to champion and i felt this sort of I, i felt so disenfranchised with star wars for so long this thing i love mm. this thing that held my heart perfectly beautifully and and cradled me and then and then suddenly my heart was dashed and I was just tired of being broken over it. And I was yeah, tired that's, of being I think bad. a phase a lot of people have gone through is they've been broken by what the new direction has been. And then like, probably like you, you knew it sort of about it, but you never really got into the other timeline to know how good that was. Mm -hmm. and there, maybe there's a way to maybe stop being so broken. Because that's never, uh, and look, it's there. I make no bones about it. I'm fandom menace, right? Um, yeah. But I don't want to be angry. I don't want to mm -hmm. be broken. I just didn't know I had an option, really. You know? Yeah. Oh, I can see that. Because um, someone knew about it before. It's a different perspective with me. So, yeah. And one of the things I could do at least is go, hey, I'm going to go back to the EU and experience these stories that are great compared to wanting trying to push through and look at these other stories that I'm not keen on. Mm -hmm. I still plan to be, like, I'm still fan of Menace. Look, EU oh, or yeah, no. and that's your decision. 
Well, and I because I do have a goal, right? Like I, yeah. I don't want to continue to see Star Wars mishandled, um, in this yeah. way. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to see it mishandled and yeah. the story quality drops so much. Yeah, I'd like to see. I and I don't like the notion that with a stroke of a pen, they can decide what is and isn't true when it comes to Star Wars, mm -hmm. right? What what is and isn't canon. Um, yeah, well, that was the real blow to a lot of people, especially the <laughs> the whole EU fan groups that were around at the time. That was very div the first division before even the Force Awakens came out. Between this was that they decanonized the EU, and then a lot of people were just going, "Okay, they decanonize it. We're not going to watch or look at any of the new stuff." Mm -hmm. And so that's where a separate group of people formed to say, "We're just going to do the EU." Mm -hmm. And then the sort of a second huge divide was when The Last Jedi came out and the fandom manners became more prominent and there's the whole hating on The Last Jedi. Well, so I'm criticising it. Well, it, boils say hating, more, but... it boils down to more than just hating on The Last Jedi. Yeah. We, there's a lot to it and, and, and this isn't a fandom in a stream so I won't get into all of it. Yeah. But there, oh, it's, it's just a general term because I think people know what I mean. If you look at your content, you go, you're criticising it and trying to make Future stories better. Well, and I don't. I don't think any of us appreciate sort of this um, calling people names without ever getting to know the person. Oh no, the Lucasfilm have just been really unprofessional with that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So the the and look, fandom menace isn't like some organization. We we don't have like we don't have a, a specific like hierarchy or whatever. We just all seem to kind of align with this whole notion that hey, it's rude to it's it's rude to call people terrible names when you don't know the person you're even calling the name. Maybe a person has a legitimate grievance and as opposed to handling in that actual grievance, you treat a person like they're less than person. And so that's mm -hmm. the big issue I think that most people within the fandom menace are trying to address. But it all kind of does come back to the same thing, which is um that you mishandled this thing we love. Please stop doing yeah. it. Please stop doing that. And I rather want to treat yourself to be better. Yeah, just do better. That's all we want. Just do better. And instead of blaming us for being terrible people, for not liking the garbage that you handed us and then calling us names because we didn't like it, just do better. That's all we really want. Just yeah. treat us with some measure. We're the ones who pay for this stuff. We've you expect you want our money, right? You want us to give you our money. You want us to come and support this product. That you're putting out there and 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 at this point that's what it feels like as a product because you're producing yeah. it in a way that makes it feel this like sort of this soulless entity at this point yeah if you want us to support it don't treat us like there's something wrong with us when all we're asking for you to do is make a good product yeah so that's and on the soul, yeah on the soulless thing as well i feel like even though the directors might say they love doing that what you see in the product is just the well, seeing the product, seeing the movie, and that is that they're not putting love and care into it. Mm -hmm. They don't have the love and care that, say, a fan would have for mm -hmm. the franchise. As yeah. a lot of the authors of the EU actually were, they actually really enjoyed Star Wars and wanted to add to it in good mm -hmm. ways. Make something special. Yeah. And, you know, you could say, yeah. I could tell as of sort of absorbing heir to the empire that it was a book written with love it was a it was a love letter to the original trilogy these were these are the characters i know and love and these sort of the callbacks over and over again to the original trilogy just a constant callbacks but still still fitting snugly and beautifully into the into the story that they're telling me at that moment it makes you it gives you the impression that the, you are experiencing these same characters again. It doesn't feel soulless. It feels like a love letter. It doesn't feel like a, a device used to sell me a product. It feels like a person conveying, conveying to me the characters that I've already known and love. And then, then again, adding to that, adding new characters to it that I've already become very fond of. Um, even though I, I'm obviously yeah. not fond of Thrawn in the way that I'm fond of Luke, yeah. but I'm, I'm fond of this, this menace 
uh, who presents himself in a sort of cold, calculating, terrifying way. Like this mm-hmm. is someone who I, who I genuinely fear for the well-being of these characters I love because of him. He's a legitimate yeah. threat. And he's a great villain. I'm glad to see him. I'm 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 glad he's here. I'm so glad you're here and that you're not Snoke and getting cho- chopped in half and, <laughs> and and there's nothing about you that's feared. Like I'm so glad that you're not a, a whiny crybaby slashing things with his sword having a temper tantrum. I'm so you're, I'm so glad you're not General Hux being slammed into the ground and making ah! yells like over over <laughs> Like, I'm so yeah. glad that I'm actually scared of you. I'm so glad you're a legitimate threat. You mm. terrify me, sir, and I appreciate you. So yeah. thanks for being there. Um, he's 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 a genuinely he's an adversary that that I worry for my characters over, and I appreciate. Yeah, that. I <laughs> Timothy Zahn created a great villain, and. It, even after later on, I won't spoil anything if you don't know, but even after later on, he obviously gets defeated because the good guys win. Yeah, always win, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Even later on, the effects of his presence are still felt. Really? And it leaves a lasting effect on the universe. Good. <laughs> so it's awesome. I wouldn't want less than that for him, though. He's a good villain. Yeah. I wouldn't want less than because you could still feel the shadow of, of, you know, the emperor even in this mm. book, right? Because he he leaves a lasting impression on Mara. Um, she was his a hand. huge lasting impression. Yeah, yeah. she was she was his hand, and she was genuinely connected to him. And so so even the old villains they're not they're not done and gone and 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 washed away. They have this sort of residual impact on the the galaxy around them. And and which leads into more stories, which is how a story should flow, right? How how a linear timeline should flow. You should feel the effects of what's come before and be invested uh because you know further invested because of what you've already been through. And then of course you can move forward with new characters like Mar new characters like Thrawn and and Wedge has taken on this whole sort of new like like he's become far more prominent in in this Wedge book. becomes a lot more prominent in the EU yeah because so I'm reading the X-Wing series at the moment as well yeah this has been a really cool experience to see things sort of ex- expand for like for lack of a better word expand out and uh, I've enjoyed it I've really enjoyed it and it's sort of Sates the craving that I've had within me for so long now because I got this carrot dangled in front of me by Lucasfilm, you know, like, hey, you're getting more Star Wars. And I was like, yay! And I was like, ah! And then I was like, <laughs> well, now what? You, you've yeah. awoken a beast inside of me that I, that you've only, you've, you've raised all of this hope and then you've dashed it mm. and I'm sort of left here feeling hollow. And, and that book's filled a gap in my heart and and made me feel a little less honestly a little less angry <laughs> so, right. cuz you don't need to it's good not to have to feel angry about it <laughs> well i'm not even an angry person by by nature actually by nature i'm i'm typically it, just to put this out here if you got me angry you deserved it okay yeah. i'm not yeah. an angry person I don't live my life that way because I think living it it makes you it drags you down inside. It yeah, eats you. It's a difficult way to live. Who who enjoys walking around angry, right? Nobody wants that. I think righteous indignation is important. Mm. Um, but I don't believe that just being angry for the sake of being angry is healthy. So if you got me angry, you deserved it. You can ask anyone in my family, okay? Getting me angry is not something that happens easily, but you did it. So I guess you should get some kind of medal because it's not easy to do. But here well, I am. Brian Johnson says in the early clip he wanted a movie that people either love or they hate. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that is such a great alternative and it's a good way of try- filling that void, I'd say, of saying, where's the Star Wars that I love? And then you go and read the EU and go, ah, oh, that's where it is. That's great. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I felt quite fulfilled. Um, just, you know, being able to kind of, <laughs> I kind of just want to listen to it right now, actually, <laughs> We've been talking about it. And I just sort of sitting here going, I kind of want to just go ahead and pull up the next book and see where we're going, you know, from here. I, I'm very interested in the Mars. I know I've, I've heard, I've heard some stuff. I've, I've been spoiled, if you will. And I suppose that's my own fault for waiting for so long to get. Oh, well, it. the series did come out in 1991. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> 20 years later, I have I have no right to complain about being spoiled. And I am well aware of a lot of the things that go. I understand that Mara and, and Luke get together at some point and that they, they have a future together. I, but I, I don't care that I know that. I, I've yeah. just from listening to this book so far, I want to know how. I want to yeah. hear. I want to understand the 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 path that they take to get there because she hates his guts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she would like to kill him. <laughs> Real so, kill Luke Skywalker. <laughs> and he's so impressive, even without his force powers, like running mm -hmm. around in that forest, man, he's he's still on top of it. And, so, and that speaks a lot to, to Luke himself as a person, not just, you know, like his, you know, you could say, oh, he's, well, he's got the force, right? But no, Luke himself is a strong, capable individual. It, it takes him out of the force. Like you see him at, from A New Hope to Return of the Jedi, become the person that's a lot more capable and dependable. Yeah. And then you just see it progress even further here. Mm -hmm. All the while, near the start as well, having his doubts about himself and mm -hmm. having his own flaws. Yeah. Which is cool. He's a person. That's the best part, is that for all of his his ability and his strength, and he still has these internal these internal struggles and and the doubts. But he's he's a very capable individual, and and he's relatable. And it's it reminds me a lot of why why it was that I loved Luke, and he was my favorite character for so many years uh, because he's. You can relate to him. And that's another thing. I'll, I'll just rant about it for just a second longer. They yeah, act like female. They act like women are incapable of relating to a male simply by our inherent genders, right? Like that that somehow is a barrier for me to, identi to identify with a male and what it is, what kind of struggle a male may go through. It feels so diminishing as a person mm. because why should it matter? Why should my gender disqualify me from understanding the struggles that a male may go through? It seems like such a sexist stand to take. Yeah. Uh, this uh, is two differences that you want to understand like some of the anatomical differences but as far as internal emotions and everything then we're still people why shouldn't i be able to appreciate the struggle uh of of a call to adventure that you're not that you feel unprepared to take and then you step into a world larger than you that you're not ready for but you try to step up to the plate and be equal to the task and and you fall and you falter along the way but you you do you do, right? You didn't yeah. just try. You do. And why shouldn't I be able to identify with that? Because of what's between his legs and what's between mine? What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, that doesn't have to do anything with that. That's just being a person and good characters. <laughs> yeah, but I have internalized my misogyny. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I feel rather empowered, actually. <laughs> I don't care about what's between his leg and legs and what's between mine. Um, it just it blows my mind. But this, um, but back to what we were saying about the Luke. This, this is Luke. You know, this sort of, um, you know, of course, you progress through your life as you grow. You become more confident, more capable. You you learn what your abilities are, and and you you put yourself to a task and you accomplish it, right? But you still have that internal dialogue where you ask yourself, it, can I do this? Or am I equal to the task? But you still try and you push and you persevere. And that's this Luke, the one who never gave up, the one who never lost hope, the one who continued to push himself in spite of all odds, because that's what you do. That's a person who has a good grip on who they are and what their, what their purpose in life is and where it is that they're meant to go with things does, even when they have internal doubts and questions. And even when they fail, they get back up and they keep going because that's what you do. And you'll see later on as you read more that Luke does fail quite badly in parts, but then he just picks himself up and says, actually, I've got to actually do something to fix this. <laughs> 
rather yeah. than just exiling himself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is ridiculous. So I'm just going to go to this little island out here in the middle of space. Oh, about 10 years, I think it was. <laughs> which was ridiculously long if he is going to exile himself. I mean, even Mark Hamill, for all of his crank on Twitterness, knows that that's not Luke, right? Knows that Luke would never do that. Because as the actor, you come to really understand <laughs> your character that you played. Yeah. And I think that's really what he knows. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Mark Hamill. We don't agree politically, and that's fine because mm -hmm. I don't need to agree with you politically to respect you as a human no. being. And I respect what he's done. Uh, and he's a champion of Star Wars. And he stood uh, in the face of this entire corporation, not just Rain Johnson, because everybody slapped him down, right? And they, and they did it anyway. And he still stood there and said, but it's not right. And then spoke out when it wasn't easy to do so. When he could have been, and I'm, and I'm sure they did, um, you know, be like, hey, shut up. You have to shut up. Because he did eventually kind of pipe down a little bit. But it took a lot of guts to sort of channel Luke Skywalker, if you will, and do, do what was difficult in that moment and use your voice and say, this is wrong. This is and wrong. something he had to say about, and I really respect him for that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I haven't followed him from Twitter because I don't want to see all the political stuff anyway. Right. <laughs> He's got his political beliefs. But you know what? Yeah. Far be it for me to tell someone else what to think. Yeah. And you can't choose for other people. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's cool. More mm. power to so. Yeah. Yeah. What have you been spoiled with the EU about? A bit more specifically. <laughs> so I am aware of Luke and Mara becoming a thing um let me see what else have i been spoiled about uh probably watched ryan's video about mara and that just spoiled it <laughs> yeah that's spoiled well it, it was spoiled before that as well um i know about the chick with the whip the lightsaber whip. oh the light whip yeah yeah and that luke has to get a shoto saber to kind of take yeah. that that actually appears in the old marvel comics do what the old Marvel comics. The old Marvel comics, yeah. So I do know some some stuff. <laughs> I just yeah. have a little finger back there. So, yeah. Um, Mara has a... Doesn't she have a pink lightsaber? Who was that? She sort of did. She has an art. Uh, I forget exactly what color she has back when she was Emperor's Hand now. But... Nope. She, she has a different colored lightsaber later on when she gets together with Luke. <laughs> Isn't it purple? Is that right? Or? No, it's actually Anakin's lightsaber that he gives to her. Oh! <laughs> so it's great. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, it's a great moment. She hates him. What the heck? Oh yeah, it takes them ten years so as you get together or whatever. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, I can't imagine it going any quicker, considering how much she wants to kill him. And <laughs> there's actually the their marriage isn't in a novel. Their marriage is actually only in a comic series called Union. That has a few really? issues. Yeah. Wow. But the um. It's a Hand of Thrawn duology when eventually you get to it. Oh. May as well tell you. <laughs> so much to absorb. I'm going to have to get there. I'm going to have to get there because I've sort of started now and I have to know what happens. You're taking your first steps into a larger world. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, there's... Uh, there are lots of things that I've kind of heard here and there about different things. I had heard about Thrawn prior to this. Um, I know about some stuff way back, way back with BBY. Is that right? Uh, before the Battle of yeah. the, back to the Old Republic, uh, like way back in the day where it was um, the Jedi. Yeah. The Dawn of the Jedi era is really interesting. That only started coming out like 2013 as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that, that they had like the two moons, the light moon and the dark moon. Yeah, Ashla and Bogan. Ashla and Bogan, yeah. The dark side force uses to 
Bogan, I think it was, to mm-hmm. imprison them. Mm-hmm. I know. I... Sort of rethink your life. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> go get your. You your... want to go to, at Bogan and really think your life. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's about Bane and the Order of Two, and that he had a sort of apprentice, and uh, that that was sort of, and that that was even that was um, something that he had discovered from previously, correct? Like, uh, yeah, he got inspired from the teachings of Revan. Yeah, and that that had that had been like because they had had a whole bunch of Seth, a uh, Sith, like that was in that was in. Uh, Star Wars uh, or Knights of the Old Republic as well, I believe, or was it uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic? It was in one of those two? Uh, um, with, like all these Sith running around. They did in both. Yeah, and it's so more prominently <laughs> the Old Republic, but that's because you can play as a Sith in that as well. So, mm. so yeah. but I know Darth Bane like implements the rule of two, so I know about that. Um, but like, there, like, there's so much I don't know, obviously. So, so I sort of had these little snippets of knowledge from pieces all over the place. And that, Darth Bane is actually a character that George Lucas created. He created Darth Bane. Yeah. He, hmm. they, he's talked to authors a lot. I mean, he didn't read all the books or whatever, but he actually talked to, like, he talked to people and say they presented this idea for the origin of the Sith, but then he goes, no, it happens this way. Hmm. And so what we get in the EU is what, his story was for the origin of the Sith and a lot of the stuff like the Force Unleashed he sat down and talked to them for hours talking about the relationship between Vader and the Emperor nice because um have you played any of the other video games no um a lot of the newer stuff I'm just not it came out at times where it just wasn't possible for me to get into new stuff uh so just the lining of the time or time timing didn't line up right um so you know knights of the old republic and and uh star wars the old republic were just things that just happened to work at that time i was super huge into uh into world of warcraft for many many years i think there was some stuff that came out right during like right in the middle of that obsession that i had (laughs) because (laughs) freaking world of warcraft will take your life over. If I could tell him, like, oh, anyone, don't do it. Don't I, like, do I played it. Guild Wars when I was younger because I couldn't pay for the subscription for World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. You get that $15 a month fee, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I was a kid with no pocket money. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, would, I would highly recommend to anybody who has never picked up World of Warcraft. Now, like, it's kind of died off now. I, mean, I think I got, like, Five or six different trial rounds. Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying it out. Not the same. You get up to that. You get up to that level cap, and then you start raiding. And that gear is a drug. <laughs> the gear is a drug. <laughs> you got to do your dailies. You spend forty five minutes just doing your dailies. See <laughs> that rep reward. <laughs> and you're like, and that's before you even start working on any of your maths and any of your professions and anything like that. No, man, like it's it's a drug. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, and it might as well just take up all your time if you let them. Essentially, like that. <laughs> that was essentially everything that wasn't working, cooking, cleaning, and taking care of kids was World of Warcraft for like five years. <laughs> so it was bad. But I miss my old guildies, man. I miss my old guildies. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a great community that you can build there. Yeah. I'm around yeah. everything. Yeah, and people treat you differently. Like you're a girl. And you're like, yeah, I'm a girl. That's great. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All the good jokes. <laughs> you gotta love it. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun though. But yeah, um, yeah, I haven't played. Obviously, I played the Star Wars RPG now. Uh, but that's not a video game. It's which just- one's that one? Because there's three different versions. You know, you'd have to ask Steek. Uh, I know that we're, uh, I think it's 45 ABY. Yeah. Because um, there, there are three different systems as well. There's old West End Games ones. The Wizards of the Coast did one for a time. And then Fantasy Flight Games. I'm not sure which one we're running on. It's probably Fantasy Flight because that's the easiest to get. Yeah. 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 We're after, we're after the original trilogy. Um so we're sitting. I think, I think. Don't quote me, but I think he said it was uh, forty-five after the battle. Oh. Of the end. So, oh, nice. um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun with it, though. Yeah. I'm being a Zeltron. Yeah, I love it. 
I'd never been introduced to Zeltrons prior to this. So it's right up my, right up my alley. Do what? Good fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I'm an adept. So, yeah. Nice. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Do what? Improvise, adapt, overcome. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> I, 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 think I'm I just I don't like that I don't get to have a lightsaber because I'm you know I'm, I'm not a full like Jedi or whatever so I just get to use the force here or there or whatever but I've been like trying to find ways to get around it like come on stick just let me have a lightsaber and he's like you should have just been a Jedi I don't want to be a Jedi I don't want to <laughs> you know I don't want to be stuck with the whole like hey I gotta here you a go or a thing to have you seen the Clone Wars TV show oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So Aura Singh yeah. in the EU. Oh, yeah. I know was that a uh, force sensitive and she had was trained by someone called the Dark Woman and she actually still had a lightsaber and was using it while she was bounty hunting. Sure, and you can. But in the game you you lose you're not you you have like a penalty. So uh, you can't just <laughs> the the game, lightsaber. Yeah. You get a penalty. I mean, yeah, I can have a lightsaber, sure. But I can't just use it because it's it doesn't you work. Chop off your limb, yeah. You chop off your limb, yeah. You chop off your own limbs. I mean, <laughs> yeah, with a bad enough roll, yeah. <laughs> Hand right gone. So <laughs> I suppose I could be replaced, but you know. Oh, I guess it's the same. If you get a bad roll when you're fire blaster, you shoot your own toe off or something. You could, but like if if you're playing with a blaster that you are supposed to be using and that you have a good buff on or whatever, then you're you're fine, you know. So it's typically it's you're not gonna have that happen unless you like <laughs> pull a one. <laughs> like I just want to see that happen now sometimes. <laughs> dude, swing by anytime. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a blast. Yeah, I count one of them, but I've been pretty busy as well. So it's another yeah. feeling. Oh yeah. Feeling. Yeah, it pretty much sums it up. Uh, do you have any? So, what's your plan moving forward? I know you're going to read the Thrawn trilogy, but do you have an idea of what you're going to read after that? So, I'm probably just going to do whatever the hell Lethal and Ryan tell me to do. <laughs> oh, I'm along the book club sort of thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably just going to kind of take my cues from them because um, I, I I had a little bit of interaction with Matt Wilkins as well lately. So I'd like to maybe get his take on it and see where he would direct me if he'll talk to me. Um, so like, I know yeah. he's really busy and I know he's got his own stuff going on. Uh, but like, I just am trying to take my cues from people who kind of are in this world and, and know it and sort of follow their lead um, because, you know, I don't, really know what I'm doing and yeah, it's good to I, have someone to be a guide especially with so much content out there <laughs> yeah like where do you even start well so far this has been a pretty great starting point and I've really loved it and I, I look forward to what to what else I can what else I can dive into that will sort of fill this aching hole in my well, heart I have a video on where to start with the novels Ooh, shameless plug right, like just riding in with his white knight Armor on. Oh, I, got <laughs> I got your fam. <laughs> Adorable got in all the ways. As well, when I upload this. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. We're not technically live. This will be aired yeah. after the fact. Hi, people in the chat or comment section or whatever. I don't hey, know. We're going to premiere it, so people should be watching along. It'd be awesome. I hope so. I hope you guys come and support Callum. He's fighting the good fight, and he's opening. Did you copyright up. strike me? So this is the closest I get. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Freaking YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> That's it. So. That's awesome. And yeah, if you wanted to jump on Discord and join the alternative to live streams I'm doing, which I'm going to be streaming some stuff to Discord, so people can watch and have a comment section on there. I'm going to give it a try. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Discord has never been my thing. Discord is, oh, it's, it's, I'm having a hard enough time figuring out how to navigate YouTube and I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> so like this yeah. Discord thing is just another thing to add onto. And then people are asking me, oh, you need to do an Instagram. Oh, you, oh, I just set up a Facebook. So yeah. like, there's a lot of different things that I'm trying to, to balance here. Oh, but you just do the Matt Wilkinson don't have any social media yet. <laughs> 
I don't think I could do that though, man. Matt's yeah, a stronger person than I am. <laughs> He's just a boomer that doesn't like technology. See, everybody can see <laughs> boomer. What is with you and, and Ryan and the boomer word? It's, it's I don't know. It's just a label for his generation. <laughs> From the baby boomers. For the baby boomers. Yeah, well, I know what it means. I'm just saying, like, I'm not a boomer. Right? I don't think Matt's a I boomer. Know, I was saying, you know, we're just. Everyone calls Matt a boomer, so I've started doing it now. <laughs> well, I'll, de I'll defend Matt. I don't think Matt's a boomer. All right. He I got your back, Matt. I got your back. He just doesn't like technology. <laughs> it's okay. You're allowed to not like technology. You're allowed to just, maybe it's for the better. Maybe he has an inherent wisdom that we've all failed to pick up on. And he's just smarter than all of us. Maybe that's what it is. He's so. Matt, they're living in the year 3000 while we're in 2019. Yeah, maybe he just knows what's up. Um. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was that's awesome. So I'll, I'll shoot you that video afterwards and whatnot. It'll be in the description of the video. Um, Let's go watch it. be awesome. Go watch it. Woo! I think that pretty much does it. Do you have anything else to say? I just want to thank you for having me on. I know you're not Fandom Menace. Um, so I know that, like, reaching across the aisle to me is something that, you know, it's uh, it doesn't happen very often or it doesn't, doesn't always happen. And so I appreciate you bringing me on and kind of, Sucking me further down this rabbit hole. <laughs> drag you down into the rabbit hole. Let's go. I'm let's I'll put some bells like on. The, let's do this. the rope lashes out and grabs you by the ankle and drags you. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Hold on. The Sarlacc pit, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be reading the EU for a thousand years. <laughs> Being slowly digested by it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, the intention with this as well, I thought in the end was it was I like talking to get a different perspective because there's all this stuff about fandom and this is being labeled certain things and whatnot when you've got your own opinions as well, your individual people. I and mean, I thought it'd be good to get a perspective of someone getting into the EU from the positive change I'm seeing in the fandom minutes with talking about the EU more. Yeah. I think, I think it, it does offer up this sort of alternative because I'm a little less angry. Um, not that I intend to stop fighting the fight that I'm fighting or whatever, because I think it's worthwhile and I think it's good, but there is a hole in my heart that's been, that feels a little less, you know, achy. And I, it sort of that's feels right. like this chasm's, had a little something to fill it up. And um, I think you may find that people are are far more willing to listen to someone who disagrees with them when they don't feel like they've been shut down or yeah. sort of, uh, pushed off to the side as though they don't matter. Uh, and it's easier to feel that way when you have an alternative, when you have an option. So uh, I think it's positive. It's a positive all around. I'm looking forward to seeing people jump down the rabbit hole with me, guys. If you haven't already, just, you know, let's go. The water's fine. Let's just do it. Just do it. Don't try. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Do or do not. There is no try. There is no do not. Just do. <laughs> just do it. We'll pull out the Nike check mark right now. I think Ryan will be in full endorsement of just do it, right? Like his protein. Yeah and all of this buckwheat and, grass. <laughs> and with Shia LaBeouf, it's like, what are you waiting for? Just do it. Just do it. I can't, I can't do the whole, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, what's his name? Shia. You know what Who? Yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Yes, yeah, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> that guy's a pip. <laughs> do it. So. Let your dreams be dreams. Yeah. <laughs> so cool um you can find mary mayhem on her channel where she said what she didn't hear this up but if you want to plug yourself again you can yeah sure uh, so i am mary b i am the mistress of mayhem disruptor of the narrative and official women card holder you can find me over my channel mary mayhem super easy to find it's like you know like it's spelled here on the screen as just a merry like Christmas because believe it or not, I'm an inherently happy person. Uh, mayhem. So yeah, just 
uh, you know, just pop on by and see if you like what you see. And hey, if you do, that's great. And hey, if you don't, that's okay. I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I will not hold it against you. And thanks everyone for joining and listening to this. I thought it was an interesting perspective to see from the perspective of a fan of Menace getting into the EU. I thought I'd highlight that. It is really cool. Thanks. And uh, this started from Matt joking that I'd have Mary on a stream and I just took her up on it and I was like, yep, let's do it. That's Anytime, awesome. Man. Yes, <laughs> Matt Cake. Or I'm sorry, yeah, Muffin. You're a <laughs> What What flavoured muffin would I be? I think you're, oh, that's a good, I think you're probably like a strawberry banana muffin. Oh, that sounds yeah. nice. You know, like with the red hair, but you know, you're. Yeah. Yeah. Strawberry blonde out of interest. Do what? Strawberry blonde out of interest. Strawberry blonde. Yeah. You look like a strawberry banana muffin. <laughs> They're delicious. Awesome. So we'll leave that there. <laughs> Got to make sure that I'm cooked all the way through. Not too doughy in the middle. <laughs> I thought I was bad. Oh my goodness, Callum got jokes. <laughs> oh, I'll see you in the next uh, video or stream or whatever you're watching. Whatever see you. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>